Hi, everybody. So this is a bonus episode for you guys from my other podcast, The Next Take Podcast, where we are currently covering All Black History Month. So what you can expect with this episode is we're talking about civil rights leaders. So I won't give anything away as to who we're going to be discussing, but I hope you do enjoy and for, you know, you know what? I'm not going to say anything more. I want you guys to enjoy the episode. So this episode is actually releasing a week after um, this episode has released on our Next Take podcast feed. So this, um, so just so you um, have an idea, if you want to hop on to the podcast, we are doing a full month for Black History Month. I think that is how it should be. So our very first episode of our Black History Month was was, um, two weeks ago. Oh, I'm recording this early. I'm recording this even before this episode is even being released. So I haven't figured out dates per se. So I think, so our first episode, so that would have been three weeks ago. Our first episode for Black History Month was Black Inventions. So we definitely had fun talking about um, the Black inventors who created these inventions. Uh, I very much enjoy talking about my two. Um, and uh, I think if you are interested in that and having your mind blown um, as to, you know, some of these inventions by Black people, um, definitely hop on over there. That's our first episode, which would have been released, I believe, on February 1st. Um, again, we're ahead. So that even had that hasn't even um, been post, uh, been released as of the time that I'm recording this. Um, and then, um, this week, the second week was our civil rights, um, episode, which you're getting now. And then going forward the, this week's episode. So the week that you're getting this, this week's episode will be a little more of a tough one. So I would say there is going to be a blanket trigger warning for that episode. We on top of the episode, but we are going to be having hard conversations about some of the deaths that shaped not only the civil rights movement, but as well as the Black Lives, uh, Black Lives Matter movement as well. So um, that is definitely going to be a tougher episode, but I think that it's an important conversation to have. So you can expect that if you are interested in, in the podcast in general, you can definitely hop over there and that will be released on that feed. And then going forward the rest of the month, next week, we're going to be talking about Black people in arts. So we're definitely going to definitely come back down a little bit and not be too, you know, too trigger warning <laughs> with, with that. It's going to be a little bit more of a fun episode. Um, and then we end off our month with the Black Lives Movement. So that's what you can expect with the Black Lives um, History Month. So I would, um, if you're interested, if you like what you hear with this episode, I would definitely hop over there. I will be putting all of the links that are important for you to have um, will be with this episode. I will kind of hang back with the reality T um links and whatnot, there will be strictly a next take podcast bonus episode for you guys. This is something again as mentioned I'll be doing moving forward. So what you can expect for the next time you'll get this. So um the next full bonus episode you'll get for the next take podcast will be um in April. I think I have pretty much an idea of what I want to talk, what I will give you guys in April. Um but um, you will get a quick little bonus episode in March because I think it's important to talk about. I think, you know, probably a lot of my listenership is women and, um, maybe also out there women love Broadway. So, so we will be with that. Hopefully this makes sense because I have to take a quick break. Um, so with that, we will be doing 10 minute sneak peeks or whatever to each episode in March where we'll be doing um, a women's focused episode with 
Women's Month or Day, I'm not sure which it is. Um, and then we'll also be doing a 10 minute sneak peek into our Broadway episode, um, which is both in March. Um, so that will be coming out to you about a week or so after the Broadway episode is aired, um, is released on our other feed, which would be in the middle of March. So you can expect that those two episodes will be combined together as one, um, but you'll be getting 10 minutes each, which is about 20 minutes. Um, and then you'll get the full episode in April. But anyways, that's what's to be expected without further ado. Um, let's hop into the episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and I will talk to you soon with one of our episodes. What's up, everyone? This is the Next Day Podcast, episode 19 with Mikhail and... And Sneka. Where we have conversations on, on different topics. So welcome to another edition of our Black History Month theme episode. Uh, last week was based on, you know, inventors. And today we're doing civil rights leaders. Is that right, Tanika? Yes, we are. And as mentioned last week, I am taking a little turn with that, um, at least for one of the people I'm talking about. So shall we start this uh episode sure so i gave you guys a little clue as to who i might be talking about and i mentioned that he comes from a musical or you may have heard of him from a musical mm. and that musical is hamilton mm. i'm going to be talking about john lawrence now if you've seen Hamilton, you might be freaking, I don't know, but I am so fascinated by John Lawrence and kind of what he wanted to achieve that I wanted to talk about him at some point, and I thought maybe this was appropriate. That's what I want to talk about. So a little history on John Lawrence. So he was born October 28th, 1754 in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he died in, on August 27th, 1782 in Comby River, south of Charleston. Um, he died technically after the Revolutionary War, once everything was, you know, kind of in the agreement process, I believe. He was killed by British officers. Um, so that's what happened. And um, so with that said, he was an American Revolutionary War officer who served as aide de camp to General George Washington. Um, so just a little more of a kind of a history. So this is, like, I'm going to talk a little bit about him. And I do want to talk about why I wanted to talk about him. Um, so this kind of makes sense. Because I said I am taking a little turn here. Um, mm -hmm. So John was the son of Henry Lawrence who was an American statesman who aligned himself with the Patriot cause at an early date. John was educated in England and he returned to America in 1777 when he joined Washington's military family alongside Alexander Hamilton and Marquis de Lafayette, which I might talk about him in a future episode as well. Um, mm. He's actually from France. Um, so at this time, the elder Lawrence, which was the father, um, was serving at, as the president of the Continental Congress, and John was entrusted with the delicate duty of serving as Washington's confidential secretary, a task which he performed with much tact and skill, let's say. Um, so he did fight, so I think despite what the play says, what the, what the show says, he did battle alongside Washington at Yorktown, because I think they kind of make that look like he wasn't there, but he was actually there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little confusing, but that is to be expected with the show 
if you are a history buff and you want to understand a little more about the timeline, you should definitely read stuff because the timeline is all messed up on the show. Um, it just kind of aided to the storytelling, I guess. Um, so where I kind of wanted to really talk about Lawrence was his wanting to create an all-black battalion and maybe how that wasn't exactly possible due to the slave trade. So we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, but before I do, I do want to talk about this because I think um, for those people who watch the show, my half this question, did Lawrence actually duel Charles Lee? He did. He did duel Charles Lee. Hamilton was his second. The difference is, is Aaron Burr was not Charles Lee's second. He was mm. never there. It was someone else. Um, again, just aided to the storytelling, I guess, with the show. Aaron Burr was never involved. From my understanding, I think Aaron Burr wasn't even in the state. I think he was actually in Quebec. If you've watched the show, you might understand why I say that. But I don't think he was actually even there. But anyways, that's what that's the point. Um, they actually had a trial after the duel. Like, they got in trouble. They got in some mm -hmm. serious trouble after that. But anyways, with the, the situation with the All Black Battalion, the the issue kind of came because, like I said, that wasn't possible with the slave trade. And he was trying to say, listen, we're all not going to be free unless everyone, including black people, have the same freedoms as as white people. So he was very, very big on on that. Unfortunately, it didn't always work. It didn't work. He wasn't able to actually get it done. Um, I mean, I think eventually that does actually, well, obviously that does happen, but it happened long past his death. And I think with the aid of like Alexander Hamilton, I think even George Washington, even though George Washington has a little bit of a skeletons in his closet when it comes to slaves. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think the rumor is he probably did. Um, I think, honestly, everyone did. I think it's just had people working for them that were black. I think it's just, unfortunately, with the times. Um, but he was kind of adamant on wanting that and just wasn't able to to have that. So I, I'm, I don't know, but I, for me, the reason I wanted to talk about him watching this play and kind of seeing how much he wanted that mm -hmm. how much he worked alongside alexander hamilton to abolish the slave trade again because hamilton was from i think he's from the croix whatever i think that's where he's from from he's from a caribbean island where there are black people where he was seeing black people being carted off to wherever the fuck they were being carted off to he worked alongside alexander hamilton to have this you know abolished and unfortunately it doesn't happen in his lifetime and it's kind of at the end of the play where he's like you know which we'll talk more about in a future episode too i don't want to go too much into the actual play right but he does say like tomorrow there will be more of us and it's so like to me when i listen to it i'm like my heart just thinks there will be more of us and we're still there and it's so it just made me want to talk more about him and understand him more and that's kind of why i want to talk about him because i do wonder what would he have achieved if he was if he lived long enough to do so he died very young he was 27. Mm -hmm. um so it, it is like what could you have done and he would have gone so much against his father because his father kind of was the believer of having slaves so it just kind of makes me wonder like where did this come from and i want to understand that but unfortunately obviously we're not going to know um but i really wanted to kind of talk about that but um so 
like I said, I do want to finish up just because I'm not going to be talking about John Lawrence again in a future episode. This is mm-hmm. it. So I do kind of want to talk about a couple of different things that discredits what the play says. Um, John Lawrence was not at Hamilton's wedding. He was invited. He wasn't there. Um, like I said, he died at 27 years old. Um, and um, we there also is um, how many slaves did Lawrence free? Approximately 260 slaves he freed. Oh, wow. So that's, yeah. That's pretty good. It is. Um, there, we don't know the exact number. That could be less. It could be more. But roughly 260 slaves he saved. He saved. So that's incredible. More than I think a lot of people, especially back then, ever did. Um, so what did Hamilton say when Lawrence died? Um, he said, I feel the deepest affliction at the news we have received of the loss of our dear, um, friend Lawrence. And he did a lot to try and get him to, um, get what he wanted done. He definitely worked on that. And when John, when Alexander Hamilton died, his wife took that on, which we'll talk about in a future episode. But, um, right. um, but yeah, he definitely fought for emancipation, John Lawrence, mm-hmm. which, again, thank you for your service to the black person. And, um, but yeah, that's kind of it that I have on him. Um, again, it's limited history because he died in 1782 um, wow. and he had a very short life. He was also married. That's the other thing I found out too. Mm. He was married and he had a daughter, which is not mentioned in the in the play. But if you're interested in seeing pictures of him, I will have pictures posted of him. I'll have pictures posted of the Revolutionary War as well. Um, and we would do a side by side of the guy who plays him and, and the actual mm. guy um, that he plays. So. He is a white man. Okay. Not Latino. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay. All right. So, yeah, he so, died a yeah, he died a young young age. He did, very young. Very, very young. Wow. I mean Alexander, yeah. I mean, for the times it's not a sick middle age, but mm-hmm. when you had your life taken from you because you were killed by British officers, like we don't know how long he would have lived for, but I mean even Hamilton, he died very young as well he was i'm guessing almost 40 i'm mm-hmm. guessing almost 40 i i never i haven't done the math but i'm mm-hmm. guessing about that almost 40 if maybe 40 because we're not actually sure of what his birth date is it might have been either 57 mm-hmm. or 55 1755 or 1757 <laughs> no no for sure <laughs> so uh-huh. um okay. but uh but yeah So it's my turn, guys. So, uh, so my Black History Month civil rights leader, uh, you guys know who he is, um, Malcolm X. Okay. So, I'm happy I didn't end up. I almost did him. I'm happy I didn't. <laughs> we did him together. Would it be would it be a short episode? So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah. So let me give you guys a brief background if you guys already didn't know. Um, so. Born in May 19, tw- 1925. Oh, wow. Yeah, 1925. I felt like he was... Why did I feel like he was born in, this 19, in the 70s? Oh, no, I knew he was born in the 70s. Cause he would have had to be around for the civil rights movement. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. happened in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. True, true. What, 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 well, no, what day uh, on, in May? Sorry, what day in May? Do you know what day? May 19th. Okay, Mainly. he's a, he's a yeah. Taurus. He's a Taurus like me. Okay, he's two days after me. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So, uh, born in Omaha, Nebraska, U.S., died in February 21, 1965. So, so oh, wow. That's, that's he nice. was murdered, right? Am I correct on that? He, I we'll get to he it. Was, okay. Just, I think he was. Think, yeah, yeah, he was. He was. He was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, New York, New York, uh, African American leader and prompt figure in the Nation of Islam. Who 
articulate concepts of race, pride, and black nationalism in the early 1960s. After his assassination, the widespread distribution of his life story, the autobiography of、uh, Malcolm X, 1965, made him a hero, especially among black youth. So,、um, I don't think I read his、uh, autobiography. Have you? I have not, but I do know it. it's out there.、Mm. Yeah. I, I have seen, like, you know,、uh, documentaries、mm. and,、um, you know, movies.、Mm-hmm. And even, like, you know,、uh, if you. Were to watch the series called Harlem Godfather, he's even in there too, you know.、Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the series. Sounds familiar. So basically, it's a, a prequel of The American Gangster. Okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I don't think I haven't seen American Gangster, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's in there. So、uh, also, a little fun fact too is that, you know,、uh, Black. Uh, so, not Malcolm X was always for you know, you know, violence versus、uh, Martin Luther King. Wait, what? Against it. Was he, wait, wait, he was for or against it? He was for, I think for? he was more for violence, and then Martin Luther King was against it. See, that's what I've heard about Malcolm X that he、yeah. is maybe a little more problematic. Yeah. Because of the fact that, like, he was for it,、mm-hmm. he kind of. From the, the limited knowledge I have,、um, he kind of, I, th- I can't remember exactly the organization, maybe you have the research on it, but there was an organization,、um, Islamic or organization, Black Islamic organization, that he kind of shoved himself into the leader position. Right, yeah.、Um, so I've heard some problematic things about, about him,、mm-hmm. um, which yeah, is unfortunate, but. Yeah, which is, yeah. In the early years of, and you know, convention to like Islam,、uh, what were his,、uh, his questions answered? Malcolm, Malcolm S. born in Nebraska while an infant. Malcolm moved with his、uh, family and, to uh, Lansing, uh, Michigan, if I you know, pronounced that right. I think you did. Okay. So when Malcolm was six years old, his father. Reverend Ern Little,、uh, baptized minister, former supporter of the early Black nationalism leader, Malcolm Gravy, if I pronounce his last name right, because I'm not really good at name guy, <laughs>、uh, died after being hit by a streetcar, quite possibly the victim of the murder by whites, so like white people, you know.、Uh, Got it. So, like, they may have seen him, but they still hit him. Yes. Got it. So, that's that's what they call white people back in the day whites. So, just yeah. surviving. <laughs> yeah. The surviving family was、uh, so poor that Malcolm's mother, Lucy Little, resorted to uh, cooking、uh, dandelion greens from the street to feed her children. After she was committed to an insane asylum in 1939, Malcolm and his siblings were sent to foster home or to live with family members. So,、uh, yeah, that's a little bit of information on you know, Malcolm X、uh, and his background.、Um, Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam. After his release from prison,、uh, Malcolm helped to lead the nation of Islam during the period of the greatest、uh, growth and influence. He met Elijah Muhammad, if I, you know. That's it. That's, that's the person I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In Chicago in 1952. Then began an organized. Organizing temples for the nation in New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. And in cities in the South, he found, sorry, my bad, funded the 
uh, sorry, founded the nation's newspaper, Muhammad Speaks, which he printed in the basement of his home. Mm-hmm. And intended to the process of requiring every male member of the nation to sell an assigned number of newspapers mm-hmm. on the street. As a recruiting and fundraising uh, technique, he also articulated the nation's uh, racial, help me with this word, D O C T R I N E S. Oh God, I can never visualize doc, words. Doc. T-R-I-N-E-S. Doctrines? Doctrines, yeah. That's okay. Because I like, didn't want to pronounce it really wrong when it's like that. My God. Okay. Um, inherent evil of whites and the na- natural superior of blacks. So. Okay. Super, yeah, yeah. And uh, so basically a fun fact is that, you know, uh, Malcolm X, after his release, sorry, release from prison, he continued to visit prisoners and inmates. So, um, okay. Yeah. And uh, his final years and legacy, basically Malcolm X in 1964 and 1963 were... Uh, deep tensions between Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad over the yes. political direction of the nation. Malcolm urged that the nation become more active in the uh, widespread civil rights protests. Instead mm-hmm. of just being a critic mm-hmm. on the sidelines, Muhammad violation of moral code of the nation further worsened his relations with Malcolm, who was devastated when he learned that uh, Muhammad had uh, fathered children by six of his personal uh, two of whom filed uh, parental suits and made the issue public. So wait, so to still, I have understanding, Malcolm X had an issue because Elijah Muhammad fathered children with six women were like what was the issue here like what did he have an issue with I think he was he not with... allowed to have children I think he had, yeah Pro- it, it, yeah I, I think... was he unmarried that's a question maybe I'm asking maybe I'm asking the wrong question was he married to someone or one of these people or all of these people I don't know because Islam does believe in um, polygamy so, were he was he married, uh, or was he just? I, I don't think he was married. It sounds so okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, with that in mind, then if he mm-hmm. wasn't married, maybe Malcolm had the issue because in Islamic faith, you are not allowed to have premarital sex. I mean, that's the same with a lot of religions. But um, you're not allowed to have premarital sex. Um, you have to be married before you can have sex. Um, so maybe mm. that's why he was that's upset. Um, yeah. I don't know if he was upset, if maybe some of these women were white. I, I, I don't know. Um, but maybe maybe that's... Yeah. Maybe it's all of the above. Maybe it's mm. one or the other. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't... It doesn't say here that he okay. is married, but I'm thinking like having six children. But it's, I don't think that it could happen. Six, six. Oh, of children. course. That's that's why I'm saying like, was he like, was he a polygamist? Because that can definitely mm-hmm. happen if he mm-hmm. was polygamist. Um, My question is that it even allowed if you if you are trying to convert to Islam? Uh, what? What's not allowed? Like having six children by. Uh, if 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 he was a polygamist, then I don't see what the issue is, because okay. is is in Islamic faith, a man can have multiple wives if he so chooses. Right. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah. My guess is that yeah, he probably had different types of women. Yeah, but it's just a matter of was that the case here? Or was he just, you know, having his fun? Because why would you be upset with a man? You know, 
that's why I was confused. I'm like, is he upset because he wasn't married? Was he upset mm-hmm. because some were white or something? Like, what with with the civil rights movement being what it was? I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. That's why I was confused. I'm like, why is he upset? Yeah. Is he upset that he didn't have sex with women? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I don't, I don't think so. Don't Malcolm think X was a good looking man. I think he had no issues yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, but like he, I don't think he would be upset because he didn't have six children. That, yeah, I mean, that, I don't uh, think most men strive that. Well, I think some men do strive to maybe have as many kids as possible. Yeah, unless you have oh. unless you have money. Yeah, but yeah. Um, if you're Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, it doesn't say that it's because of whites. I'm just wondering if it was just mm-hmm. like, I, I'm most like, I think it's, he was basically unmarried and okay. from different women. And okay. Which, that's a good yeah. reason. To, that's a good, more for good reason to be mad of him. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, where was I? So Malcolm brought an additional bad publicity to the nation when he declared publicly that President John F. Kennedy assassination was an example of chickens coming home to roost meaning what what is he trying to say there i I really don't know like is that a negative thing that he's trying to say possibly might be a negative thing that he's probably trying to say okay but here's here's the issue that i have again with 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 malcolm x i'm not saying john kennedy was perfect he wasn't he was at the end of the day still a white man but he he was all about the civil rights movement. He supported the civil rights movement, which was why that freaking crazy man, can't remember his name right now, sorry guys, that's why he killed him. He was targeting him, and he shot and killed him, shot him in the head, and killed him in front of his wife. Like, if you, I don't know if you've seen the video of John F. Kennedy being shot, it is mm-hmm. one of the most disturbing things I think I've ever seen. And it's it's something like I'm literally seeing it in my head right now. It's one of the most disturbing things. So he, the- you literally see him sitting and then he's 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 his he his whole body just shoots back. Mm. And it's it because they were in a car, right? Um right. so it, it's just like I, I have an issue with that because of what John F. Kennedy stood for. Um like he hmm. was that's that's why he was killed by someone who probably was a republican let's be real here and had an issue with what john f kennedy stood for right. like i have issue with that so but anyway i i heard the saying before like chicken come home to roost it's right? i think in this case it's a negative connotation yeah you're so the meaning or the expression of it is your chickens come home to roost for a chicken to roost means to settle down for the rest or sleep for us however the expression is not at all restful Mm -hmm. when our chickens come home to roost it means our past mistakes or wrongdoings have come back to cause us problems okay so then what is okay so i don't know a lot about john f kennedy maybe this is someone we can talk about um in a future episode but my understanding of john f kennedy um from what i've seen and what i've read i i I mean i i don't know how far you are in the crown but he does show up in the crown well he shows up in the first like couple seasons i think of the crown so you've probably seen that and from my understanding of john f kennedy was kind of like okay he had a bit of a drug problem because he had injuries and he is the doctors administrating his, his medication we're overdoing it this is to put it lightly mm. he was cheating on his wife pretty oh, openly he, honestly i mean yeah. yeah what president didn't <laughs> like yeah. except, for, well, yeah. except for obama Obama never cheated on Michelle. No, I I, I can't. I say highly doubt. No. Highly doubt that. Yeah. Michelle um, would have wrote a, like a, a, a tell all, see all book or something like that to no, expose um, Obama. But, my understanding of Obama, he loves and adores his wife. I don't think he ever would. Yeah, I know. There. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. Go ahead. But yes, he had a lot of issues within his personal life. Yeah. 
that could have definitely, especially with the drugs, could have altered his decision making as the president of the, of the United States. Mm-hmm. But I am still confused when he was an ally to the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. I'm confused. Uh, like, what is Malcolm X trying to say here? Like, that kind of lends back into the he is for the violence even if that violence means killing a man yeah, in front of his right. wife. Yep. At the end of the day, he was a married man with children. And he was killed in front of not only his wife, but thousands of people. It, come on. That's not okay. At all. And who, who was his, who the vice president was, was what, Lyndon B. Johnson? Yellow, he wasn't much better. <laughs> he was actually worse. So I, I just, I, uh, okay. Anyways, yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So back to, let me see. Malcolm brought additional bad publicity um, to the nation when he declared publicly, sorry, my bad, publicly mm-hmm. that uh, President John F. Kennedy assassination was an example. It, like I said, chicken come home to roost. Mm-hmm. A violent society suffering, um, consequences of violence um in response to the outrage this statement provoked elijah muhammad ordered um malcolm to observe a 90-day period of silence and the break between the two leaders became permanent Mm -hmm. so um yeah um that's basically my uh civil rights Leader. Leader, yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like just with everything that has kind of, I feel like in today's generation, like obviously the Gen Zs can be problematic or whatever, but I think like in today's generation, it kind of, they kind of are the reason that they've gone back and kind of said, okay, yeah, everyone was like Malcolm X, you know, <laughs> but look at the history of Malcolm X and you might think different. There's mm-hmm. no question that he he shaped the civil rights movement oh yeah he, he in, in a it, good yeah. yeah but i think the question is did he impacts it in a good way or a bad way i don't know i mean if you were all, all for violence and you then know, he impacted you, in a good way nothing yeah then you then you yeah yeah then he impacted that type mm-hmm. of crowd Versus in my honest like, opinion you, he did not impact it in a good way mm-hmm. um i mean i feel like you know, if you were like a Black Panther, then maybe like that would have been like, you know, he's kind of it for you. But I think mm-hmm. even the Black Panthers, like they, yes, would use violence if needed. But I think like it wasn't like always violence to them. But I could be wrong mm-hmm. there. Um, but I mean, I think for Black Panthers, I think Malcolm Max was perfect um, to an extent. Mm-hmm. Right. But anyway. yeah. Yeah. Well- <laughs> Rest in peace to uh, Malcolm X. Uh, he, like I said, he's he died been in for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he died February twenty first, nineteen sixty five, which which should be a few days for his oh, anniversary. Right. right. Yeah. So um, uh, yeah. Wow, he died during Black History Month. Yep. Let that sink in a little bit. Jeez. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, hell, my mom wasn't even alive yet. My mom, not long after, but mm-hmm. so long ago. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yep. yep. That's the legacy of Malcolm X. There yeah. All right. So my last, you're kind of getting a two for one with mine. Um, and mine kind of has a sad ending as well, unfortunately. I think unfortunately when it comes to civil rights leaders a lot of them end in a, in a sad way um but here we go so harry t and harriet moore right off the bat were murdered on christmas day um when a bomb set by the clan blew up their home in um mims florida never heard of it mm-hmm. um before we go more into that let's talk about what they did to kind of 
shape it. Um, I would say that Harriet was a little less in shaping it, but still nonetheless, what she did still like made, I think, an impact in helping with educating children because she was a teacher. Um, and um, both were um, civil rights activists. So Harry Moore, um, while we're kind of talking about this first, he died on the way to the hospital um, and Harriet died nine days after. And they left behind two daughters, Eveline and Annie Rosala. Rosalie? Rosalie. It's Rosalie. Anyway, back in the 1930s, Harry and Harriet Moore began organizing for the NAACP in Central Florida. They launched a legal struggle that eventually won equal pay for black and white teachers. In 1941, Harry became president and later executive director of the Florida State NAACP. Under their leadership, the NAACP eventually grew to more than 10,000 members in more than 60 branches across the state. In 1944, Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall won Smith versus Allwright in the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled that all white primary elections are unconstitutional. So the reason why I say this is because with this ruling, it kind of shapes also what I believe Harry um, kind of did going forward. So with Blacks now allowed to vote in the real elections, the Moors organized the Progressive Voters League of Florida and Harry became its president. Florida's voter registration procedures were not as restrictive as those of neighboring Georgia, and in Alabama, which, yep. And within a few years, the Moors managed to register over 100,000 Black voters, increasing Black registration from 5% to 31% of those eligible. I know. I know. Their slogan was, quote, a voteless citizen is a voiceless citizen. So, mm. for years... Harry traveled Florida's muddy back roads and poorly paved highways, building the NAACP, helping Blacks register and organizing the Voters League. Harriet Moore was a sixth grade teacher at George Washington Public School. Um, one of her students, which is named, I think it's Paige Wadley Bailey, shares a memory of her classroom in 1951 so she was um or he or she i'm not sure they were um her student in 1951 so they say mrs moore did not complain or express outrage at having to teach us from old tattered textbooks passed down to us from white schools because remember that's how it would be whatever textbooks were now just not pretty enough for the white people got passed down to black schools um what she did do was teach us primarily from the few boxes of her own private books, which she kept hidden under her desk. Her books were about African-American people who had made important contributions to the world. People like W.E.B. Du Bois and Mary McLeod Buffain. Mrs. Moore taught us about the freedom fighters Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. I've don't I never probably butchered the name. I've never heard of them. Um, right. But she read stories as by Zora Neale Hurston and poems by Langston Hughes. And she shared her Ebony magazine articles about Black history. This learning was deep and personal. It was important because it was about people like us and what, and it was secret. She didn't have to tell us not to tell anyone about these books. We knew they were dangerous when she appointed one of us to be lookout, a lookout person at the window. So if a superintendent um, of schools came on one of his unannounced inspections, he wouldn't catch us using them. So I'm assuming this person would have been white. These books, mm. their physical existence and the stories they told taught us, taught me more about unspoken truth, secrets and lies. So that's the thing too. Like, I think like with white people, and again, they lived in Florida. Florida is the South. Florida is problematic in many other ways, but nonetheless, it's the South. And 
Right. I think if from my understanding too of the so like of white people and you know they have the fear that black people could be more powerful than them. So they're not allowed to educate themselves on the the histories and the past and the people who have tried to shape what it is today. They were afraid of us in the end of the day. And that's why they weren't allowed to do these things, to learn these things. And I think, unfortunately, I want to say this, not much has changed in terms of learning Black history. And I think we need to talk about this in a past episode. Not much has changed with this. We're still not teaching our children enough about Black history. And yes, that's kind of sad to kind of see, like, in 1951, this is what it was like because it had to be this way. But in 2023, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be this way. And we still haven't changed that. Interesting yeah, to me. I think the edge my bad i think the educational system needs to invest into you know uh more history other than um other than the the one side of history that we've been taught like you know uh no offense to chris columbus no offense to no no no. uh, we can offend chris columbus (laughs) we can and we can it's fine well because of his history of killing uh it, mm-hmm. indigenous so mm-hmm. but we can but like, do bad. Uh, and what what else history the world wars like over yeah. and over again and but here's you know, what i'll say about that is i'm not saying we should diminish those things either we yeah. should be talking about the world wars we should be talking especially world war ii because with world war ii comes the holocaust those are things that we should definitely should be talking about we should not be just you know eliminating those things what i am saying is where does black history fit into that we need to fit that in um well it's it's been and it should be a part of the regular curriculum you know kind of like in high school we have the option if you wanted to learn american history but i think you know i didn't do it i wanted to but i didn't do it and very few people did Mm. so i feel like something like black history should just be a part of the regular curriculum whether Mm. that is in elementary school if you mainly do it in high school i don't know we here in canada you have two years of history grade nine you have grade 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, no sorry actually i'm wrong it's just grade 10 right it's not two years it's just grade 10. yeah yeah we have geography in grade nine history in grade 10. And I know this for a fact because I have the same changed? teacher. No, has I don't that changed? Think, I don't think so. I don't think okay, so. Let me just do my research. Well, you going. do your research, but I, from my, from when we were in school anyways, it was one year of history. And it was in grade 10. You didn't have to do it again after that. And there's only so much you can fit in a semester. So whatever week, how many weeks that is, 12 weeks or whatever, there's only so much you can fit in a semester. But where do we fit in? <laughs> but... um. Well, yeah, you're, like, yeah, you? yeah, when it comes to Black history, it should be a regular thing. And it mm-hmm. shouldn't just be one month, right? Like, yeah. I mean, at my knowledge of Black history, I did a Black history course in college, and that was when I had my knowledge. That's when my, my once I had that knowledge, I was like, oh, I think very differently now. But again, there's only so much you can fit in a semester, even at college, like, and I think college semesters are even shorter than high school semesters. So it's this like, there's only so much you can fit um, in that. So, you know. Yeah, um, it, has, it, it has changed since then. It has so. changed. Okay. Yeah, it has changed. Okay, good. That's, that's good. So, but anyway. Yeah, go ahead. So, in addition to voter registration and education, the Mars investigated lynchings as well. So. Mm. In 1949, this, this is a little targeting, this made me angry when I read, was reading this. In 1949, four young black men, Groveland Four, is the men, um, were accused of raping a white girl in Lake County near Orlando. At the time, it was a Klan stronghold 
Um, so, um, this is a, a tale as old as, as time, I think. Um, later evidence indicates that the 17 year old girl had been beaten by her husband since she was 17 years old and married, y'all. Take that as you may. Um, wow. and that they, yeah, and that her and her husband concocted um, a phony rape story to conceal the beating from her parents because her parents were this close to fucking him up. <laughs> they knew he knew that. So he's like, hmm, we're in a time where if black men rape women, they get killed. So let's do that. This fucking guy. Anyways. So yeah, like her parents, like I think her father legitimately threatened to shoot the man if he did it again. If he, because I think they knew he was being abusive. And her mm-hmm. father, like, said, if you do it again, I'm gonna kill you. So he's like, I'm gonna die. So let's kill right. some black men instead, basically. Um, so Charles Greenlee, 16, and war veterans Sam Shepard and Walter Irvin, so I'm assuming these are the black boys, were arrested mm-hmm. for the supposed rape. The fourth man, Ernest Thomas, managed to flee, but was gunned down by a sheriff's posse a few days later. A mob of more than 500 white men assembled to lynch the remaining three. When they couldn't locate the prisoners, they formed a caravan of 200 cars and descended. Um, where am I? Sorry, I lost my voice. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Descended um, to the black neighborhood of Groveland, where the families of the accused men lived. So, what did they do? They shot into homes and set some on fire. The Florida governor sent the National Guard to restore order, so at least they did something. Thank you for doing something. Because this is how it was, and this was actually, I think I saw this in a movie once too. This is what they would do. You police officers, I don't trust your ability. So we're Mm -hmm. gonna take law into our own hands. That's basically what they would do, and they would try to smuggle prisoners out of prison. In wow. order to do what they had to do. This is this was a normal thing. This is not new. Hmm. This was horrible. Um yeah. so Willis McCall, the sheriff of Lake County, this fucking guy, was notorious for his brutality against blacks. Year after year he was re-elected with the support of the citrus growers who he supplied with cheap chain gang prison labor at harvest time by arresting blacks on trumpled up charges for minor crimes. So basically, let me just put this in layman's terms. He Mm. was creating his own slave trade. I'm going to arrest anybody that I can arrest, no matter what the hell they did. They could have stolen Mm. candy out of a convenience store. I'm going to arrest them and I'm going to give you cheap labors because they're the prisoners. This is what he would do. Um... He also chased any and all union organizer out of the count out of the country or sorry the county. Um, so that's what he would do. Um, the Moors discovered that while in McCall's custody, the three Gulfland defendants were brutally beaten and made to stand on broken glass with their hands roped to a pipe over their heads. Despite this torture, they refused to confess to a crime they did not commit. Unable to force a confession, McCall's de- uh, deputies manufactured enough of phony evidence to convince an all-white jury of their of the crime. Because again, oh. a jury of your peers, but blacks weren't allowed to be on the jury. So how is that a jury of your peers? Mm. So um, Shepard and Irvin were sentenced to death. Okay. 16-year-old Greenland, Green, sorry, Greenlee was sentenced to prison. Um, Greenlee chose not to appeal out of fear that a new trial would result in a death sentence. Franklin Williams, Shepard and Irvin's NAA, NAACP attorney, appealed their conviction and it was overturned by the Supreme Court in 1951. So those are the two boys mm-hmm. that were sentenced to death. 
So let's talk a little more about this fucking deputy. I'm so mad. When I read this, I was so mad. In November of 1951, <laughs> Sheriff McCall removed the two men from prison, but while driving them to Lake County for their new trial, he shot them. He oh, wow. shot them, killing Shepard and severely wounding Irvin. He claims that, oh wait, he claims that even though these two men who were handcuffed attacked him and tried to escape, so he had to defend himself and shoot handcuffed boys. So what? So was he was he lying? Was, oh, of course he, he was lying. He lied. Oh, okay. Oh, of course yeah, he was lying. lying. Of course he figured was. that he was lying. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent, he was lying. Um, Just to cover himself. Yes, and, he, and and it worked because let's continue. When Irvin mm-hmm. recovered enough to speak, he described how McCall pulled his car off the road, dragged the two men out, and began firing. So it was like execution style type situation. The Moors demanded that McCall be suspended from office. That's too fucking good, and indicated for and in, sorry, indicted for murder. But guess what, guys? Mm-hmm. Again, something that we see today. No charges were ever brought against McCall. So nothing happened to him. The, right. I was on, I'm gonna say this and this might but I think like this should be understood. I was actually mm-hmm. surprised that the police officers who killed George Floyd actually were indicted for murder. Like I'm shocked. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked that, that actually happened. Yeah. Oh, and guess what? Update. The main guy, I can't remember his name because who cares? The main guy, mm-hmm. he got beaten in prison. He's still alive though. Yeah. <laughs> he he did. He, he got beaten in prison for um, killing George Floyd. Yep. I mean, I'm surprised because he's been in solitary, so that's why it hadn't happened earlier. But now he's in general pop. He's in gen pop now, and he got like attacked. Like, and I said, "Oh well, I don't care. I per- maybe this sounds bad, but I don't care. I don't care. When you're stepping on someone's neck for seven minutes and he's telling you he can't breathe, I don't care what happens to you. So the cop's name that killed George Floyd, his name is Derek Chavan. Yeah, who so, cares? So letting you guys know. <laughs> really and really, who cares? Yeah, so I'm just letting, you, letting the folks know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but he deserves everything that was coming to him. Anyways, Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure what happened with the others. I think there's, there, was, there was four of them. Or four, three or four of them, I can't remember. I think it was four though. There was an Asian guy. There was a black guy too. There was him, and I think there was another one, but I can't remember. Anyway, in jail. I'm, good. I'm good. Yeah, they're all in jail. So I mean, I don't think the others happen. would have gotten like life or whatever because they didn't actually do the act. But I'm, I could be wrong. Maybe they did because they kind of didn't stop him, right? Yeah. That, they should have done well that's i don't story, understand right? they, they should have done something they should have those guys just just like you know sat there and watched that man just kill another black man come on i mean exactly you had a chance to release your foot off of his neck any point before you hit that seventh minute it takes seven minutes to strangle a person it doesn't just happen you had the intent to keep your foot on his neck for seven minutes. That's an, I'm sorry, that's an, that, if he was in charge of the first, first degree, I don't know what more you need. Cause you had every chance to release your foot off of him and you didn't. Yeah. And that's besides, that's, yeah. that's besides the fact of George Floyd literally telling you, I cannot breathe. That is, for yeah. even take that aside for a minute seven minutes yep i can't even imagine and uh so the so just to add insult to injury the police officers got way less than mm-hmm. Derek. way like how way less one of the one of the police officers alexander uh i think it's kong I think that's the Asian one. He was a little. No, no, it's not. not, It's not him. Okay. He's he's like a little bit like you know mixed, Mm -hmm. but like he got three and a half years. Mm. 
Yeah, you got sent to three and a half years. Let me just come back for the other guy. Let me see. Three. I mean, at the end of the day, like their lives yeah. are still ruined. Like yeah. they lost yeah. their jobs, they've lost their pensions. Yep. It's yep. you know, but um, so, yeah. it's still not enough. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have. I don't know about the other guys. Maybe but, some of them yeah. are still ongoing too. It's Possibly. only it's only been not even no, four no, years but, yet. But the articles are from 2022. But like mm, that know, makes it's sense. Ongoing. Yeah, I think it's I think some of them are probably still ongoing because I do remember those two were sentenced pretty soon after, like within right. a couple of years. But mm-hmm. these things can go on for a long time. It's like I said, it hasn't yeah. even been four years yet. We're reaching the four year mark. So wow, it's been that wow. Yeah, twenty twenty May twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, okay. okay, so back to this. So, with the mob attack on Groveland um, and the original rape trial and the successful appeal and the shootings, just kind of fanning the flames of racism, Harry Moore was called the most hated black man in Florida. His mother, this is this. This part is eerie, and I remember actually listening to this here in this when I listened to the podcast that brought them to my attention. Um, his mother was visiting for the holidays. This the the year they died, they were she was visiting for the holidays, and she voiced her concerns for their safety. And Harry told her, "Every advancement comes by way of sacrifice." What I am doing is for the benefit of my race. Now, I don't know how soon before this was told to them, before they had been brutally murdered, but um, I always thought that was very eerie um, mm. for, her, for his mother to say that. Um, so, late in the night on Christmas Eve, 1951, a bomb exploded under Harry and Harriet's bed. Another bedroom, sorry. Right. So it was very strategically placed under their bedroom. Wow. As mentioned earlier on, he died on the way to the hospital and she died of her injuries um, nine days later. And she left behind her, their, they both left behind their two daughters. Um, and from my understanding to um, their, one of their daughters, I think it was Eveline, has been um, very vocal. I don't know um, at this point how old she would be, but she was very vocal on um, getting justice for her parents um, Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, they were brutally murdered by the KKK. Mm. Um, They seem to love bombs, I'll tell you that. And um, that comes back um, when we do our next or our episode next week um and how much they love moms so <laughs> but that's uh that's it awesome. that's that's my those are my people all right huh interesting yeah interesting uh civil rights leaders that we picked out uh today so yeah um, and i think too that i want to mention not that they care, and it doesn't stop the KKK from killing children. Because again, right. as I am saying here, I'm probably giving this away now. Who I'm gonna, what I'm gonna talk about next week? They have no issues killing children. Um, that mm-hmm. doesn't stop them. Um, so, but I just I always think of the fact like their children were in that house, and yet you just set this bomb and think, oh well, you know less black people to worry about i guess you know it's just it's sick yeah and i think his mom was actually in the house too from my understanding i it's not mentioned in the, in the article but i'm pretty sure his mom was in the house too so it's just like but i think she was in the children's room so it's just like mm-hmm. it, ugh, these uh like you said earlier like this is what they called white people they called them whites and i'm like mm-hmm. I, I didn't say it then but i'm gonna say it now yeah, sure, we might have called them whites back in the day, but they called us worse. So it's just, it's just like these, right. what life was like for us back then, it's just, I can't. Yeah, crazy. 
<laughs> yeah. Crazy. Definitely crazy. Um. So. So if we didn't do like the greatest job, um, uh, giving you enough information about these civil right leaders, go do your research on you know Google or mm-hmm. you know history you know um dot org yeah you know. and the, the podcast that i had originally heard that talked right. about harry and harriet moore mm. i might be wrong on this but i believe it was a podcast podcast mm. so if you were to search their names and put podcast like in spotify or something mm. you might get that episode right um that's right. where i first discovered them mm-hmm. um and they're a little more our cast is a lot more informational than they are you know um mm-hmm. like putting comedy or something in it which you can get comedy um true crime podcast which i do listen to but that's a lot more informational so if you do want to have a little more information that you want to listen to a podcast definitely put right. in harry t and harriet moore podcast and spotify it should come up hopefully okay or you can go to your your barnes or noble in america and you know buy a book of these uh civil right leaders or you or can you also can to, get it online that too <laughs> or you can go to a library you know cheaper there you might know, be an yeah. audible book or something yeah 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 or you, in canada we have chapters as well mm-hmm can buy it there too so um but yeah um yeah just like it, there's a lot of information about the civil right leaders like i said if we if we didn't do a great job um just do your research and, and there's so much things. more there's yes. so many more people out there which is why yes. i wanted to talk about harry and harriet because they are not like the malcolm x's or the mm-hmm. martin the luther Ma- king's of uh, the Rosa civil rights Parks. right they're not those people that are so well known and not to discredit Rosa Parks or any of the other people they everyone had a hand in what we have today but that's why I want to talk about them because they're not as I think as out there as the others are so yeah 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 I agree so this ends episode 19 of our special, special Black History Month theme episode of the Next Tape Podcast. The Next Tape Podcast is available now on all podcast platforms. We also have a website called soul.to slash Next Tape Podcast. And Tanika, where else are we at? So we are also on Facebook and Instagram at Next Take Podcast, TikTok, um, what's the other one? I know there's another one and it's like Twitter <laughs> at Next Take Pod. Um, and there you'll get like the episode links, any pictures, which we will have, I will, at least I will anyways, we'll have pictures of um, John Lawrence and, and also the person who played John Lawrence in Hamilton. So you can mm-hmm. do side by side. Um, and I also have pictures of Harry and Harriet Tubman and also a picture of, with like their kids too, as well as a picture of the house after the bombing. I think that's important as well. Um, so we'll have pictures like right. that and right. we do our clips. Mm-hmm. Everything will is on uh, our socials as well there. Okay. okay. All right. We also have an email. Contact us at MikhailTanika at gmail.com. And yeah, uh, so what are we doing uh, next week? Okay, so So, what's what's the theme? Trigger warning right ahead of the the jump. We are going to be talking about um, the deaths that shaped the civil rights movement. And I also think just the deaths that shape even the Black Lives Movement, we can even go there too. Um, So I think what we have decided on is that I'm going to do more of the civil rights type shaping murders that happened. Um, actually, I think we can talk, at least for me, because I know what I'm talking about. Um, I am going to talk about Emmett Till 
And I'm also going to talk about, I believe it's in Alabama. I could be wrong with exactly where it is, but there was a bombing from the Ku Klux Klan. It was a bombing of a church um, that killed a lot of young girls. So I will be talking about that as well. And I know we decided for you, you might do more recent stuff. Um, I think those are important as well. Whatever you choose to do, I don't know what you're choosing to do there. Probably not sure, but I'm, I'm probably going to choose something. So yeah, <laughs> so it's a surprise. Surprise! I want to. Yeah, I, I'm putting it all out there because I, you know, I, I do want to say because both of those, the ones I'm doing, are brutal. I am also mm-hmm. going to post pictures of Emmett Till because that is what his mom did. I think mm-hmm. that Kendall's images should not be forgotten. It's hard to look at, but I don't think those images should be forgotten. Um, so I am going to be posting those. That's going to be brutal. So I think like that's why I want to say mine up front because, mm. I mean, I will not even mince when I first heard about these two uh, murders, these two events. I was crying in my Black History Month class. I never heard them before. And I, I, I will tell you right now, I have never forgotten the name Emmett Till since then. All right. Maybe maybe we can talk about like uh, George Floyd on the next one as well. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should. So that's that's probably why I want to. I have another idea for you as well. um, Yeah. That I I'll we can talk about off the air, but I I have another idea. I think I if you want to, you can choose what you want to do. But I think we should talk about as well. Okay. Okay. All All right. So that's it for you know the civil rights leader episode. Uh, so I'm Mikkel and, and I'm, and I'm Tika and we are out until next week 